So this is a hands-on demo of the Nimbus 2 EMS pump. Uh, going over the hardware, uh, the pump itself weighs 6.13 ounces. Uh, it's the same weight as an iPhone X, and it's about the size of a smartphone. So if you see here, um, it's actually smaller, a little bit thicker. Um, you have your LCD screen, uh, no backlight, LED up here, membrane keypad. Uh, on the back here, you have uh, the battery compartment. On the bottom, you have downstream, upstream occlusion sensors and your linear peristaltic pumping mechanism. And this pump is single channel only, but we do have a mount where you can stack multiple uh, pumps together. Uh, and on the side here, you have a micro USB port. Uh, in terms of power, the battery lasts for uh, 1500 mLs or 240 hours, uh, whichever comes first. And then if that runs out, uh, you can either replace the battery, uh, and it's a single A non-standard battery, so not something you can go down to your local CVS and get. Uh, however, we just pass that cost down to you guys. Um, it costs us $5, costs you guys $5. Um, and then you unscrew it, pop the new battery in, and pop um, just turn the pump on and it's ready to go again. Um, and then the micro USB port here on the side uh, is able to power the pump externally. So we have a certified wall adapter uh, that can power the pump here, um, but um, most power sources work. Um, and you can use that as backup. So from here, uh, we, also, we can also go over the set. Uh, the set has a anti-free flow clamp here, so you can see it pinches off the flow here. Um, components of the cassette are, uh, you have your bag spike, you can spike, spike any medication bag. Um, moving down the tubing here, we have a air eliminating filter. So this, the pump itself doesn't have an air inline sensor, but you have a air eliminating filter that gets rid of all bubbles. Um, slide clamp, and then back check valve here, and then lure lock at the end. And that is our HS004 configuration. Um, we also have one more configuration, which is our HS003. And this one is simply a half set or a pigtail adapter. So uh, two lure locks, very basic, clips onto the pump, and you can piggyback off of um, a running infusion. Uh, to attach the cassette onto the pump, you want to you see these two plastic hooks here. You want to hook that onto the metal bar here, and what that does is create a hinge. And then when you bring it up, you hold the black button down. What this does is it releases these three hooks, so it should just click into place very easily. And then from here, you're ready to turn on pump and use it. So to turn on the pump, you hold the on/off button for three seconds until you hear a beep. You can see the screen turn on. It shows library information, um, firmware, uh, very technical stuff. And then you'll see the screen here. So if the pump's been run before, you have the ability to uh, resume or rerun an infusion, and that's current RX. Or we can go down to new RX, which is just a new prescription. Press OK. And then here we can have uh, a couple different folders of uh, different protocols. The pump itself can hold up to 12 custom protocols. Now this isn't in addition to a drug library. There's no drug library on the pump. Um, those 12 protocols serve as a drug library. So you can either have 12 drugs um, or when we upgrade in the near future uh, to uh, a larger memory chip, uh, you can have 64 protocols or 64 drugs. Um, we also have a manual mode down here. So in manual, we have mics per kilogram per minute, mics per minute, milligram per kilogram per minute milligram per minute and then a continuous volume over time. So with any of these, the parameters are blank. Um, you simply enter in uh, the parameters and it should calculate a rate and run. Now the max rate on this pump is 135 cc's an hour. Um, in some applications, if you enter in the wrong combination of parameters and it calculates to above that rate, uh, the pump will complain and it won't run the infusion. Instead, it will say invalid rate as an error, and then you would have to go back and change some of the parameters. 
uh, use the info key to go back in menus, OK to go forward. So if I go up to one of these folders, say I go to adult and I go to say uh, Levofed or Norepi, um, you have the drug name here, we want to enter weight, you have the dose already pre-filled, concentration pre-filled, these can be changeable or locked down. With any of these parameters, we can set upper or lower safeguards. Uh, so in that sense, you can set your own custom safeguards to these uh, pumps per library. Um, if we go to weight and I enter in, say, 90 kilograms, um, at this point, these are all, fi all filled already. We have VTBI down here, which stands for volume to be infused. Um, I can press that yellow run stop key, and that starts the infusion um, review process. So it'll step through each of the parameters and at the very end it'll say OK to confirm. Once I press that green OK key, you'll hear a double beep and then it calculates that rate out. At the bottom it'll show VTBI, volume to be infused, VINF, volume infused already, and DI, dose infused. And this little status line will actually cycle every five seconds and the rate's always going to be shown and the drug name is in the top left always shown as well. Uh, if you want to titrate, you can press the info button and we go to that titration option. Say I want to change the dose, I can double it. So if I go to point 0.2, press OK all the way through. To lock that change in, I press that yellow run stop key. And what that does is it saves it and you can see that I titrated on the fly. Uh, there was no pause in infusion. It just recalculates that rate right there. Uh, the bowls button isn't used, um, that's there just from a previous application. Um, so from here, if you want to turn off the pump, you can see that I can't turn it off while the infusion's running. This is just a safety feature to make sure that uh, it's not accidentally turned off. You'd have to pump, pause the infusion first and then turn it off. So you do that by holding the run stop key for three seconds until you hear a beep, and then you hold the on off button until the screen goes blank. Uh, the pump has upstream and downstream occlusion alarms uh, that are constantly monitoring the pressure. So if there's a kink in the line, the pump will detect that it's a downstream occlusion. And if the kink resolves itself, the pump will simply resume. So it's always monitoring that pressure. Um, just to show you what an a error looks like, I'll take the cassette off and it, uh, it'll show a cassette loading error. You can see there's a flashing red light, you hear the beeps you see an exact description of the error on the screen. Uh, it gives me a chance to fix it. So from here, if I press run stop, it silences the alarm, lets you debug in silence. If I press it again, you can see that these are the infusion parameters of when it errored out. So I'm basically just resuming the infusion. I press run stop again, let it walk through the review. And at the very end, Press that OK to confirm again, and the pump will resume. Now in terms of accessories, um, we have a multi-pump mount, which I don't have in front of me, but it looks like a metal bicycle rack, and you can put four Nimbuses on it. So from there, you can kind of mimic a multi-channel um, application. If one of the channels breaks or one of the Nimbus breaks, you can simply swap it out and put it back in. You don't have to send the whole pump in. Um, but the Nimbus itself is very durable. Uh, we've done all the transportation uh, testing for it. Uh, so it is rated for transport. We followed the standards of uh, military standard A10G and we sent it out for these uh, testing reports to be done. Um, it maintained all accuracy and flow rate um, under those conditions. So we rate it for transport. Um, the pump itself, because it's so light, uh, the impact weight is very low. So if you do drop it, uh, if you do throw it against something, um, it's not easily damaged on the inside. Um, we have a single pump IV clamp mount as well. So you can see the pump just slides in here and snugly fit. Um, and then the back here, you can uh, clamp to the IV pole either with a hose clamp or, or uh, a zip tie or one of those removable zip ties or even with these screws here you can have that metal screw clamp that goes on. And that's it. Uh, 
if you guys have any questions, you can reach me. Uh, my number is 508-333-1385, or you can email me at fred.lee at amphitronics.com. Thanks.